Do you know how I know that Ukraine is going to win the war? Pretty simple. It's because we in the West have at least 87 of the 96 pages of the Russian playbook. And we're coming for those last few like Harry Potter did for the last horror crux. Uh, and we essentially laid out his playbook. In the Russian military playbook. That's straight out of their playbook. Putin's following a well-known playbook. It's the Russian playbook. This is right out of the Russian playbook. But again, we've seen Putin's Syria playbook, Russian disinformation playbook. Biden responds, cyber attacks are part of the Russian playbook. And so now they have resorted to the typical Russian playbook. This is a, a classic page out of a dictator's playbook. Something that we see is in the playbook of Russia right now. Like a page from Russia's playbook. And I've seen this playbook before from Russia. We saw this playbook in 2014. Uh, they are preparing this playbook again. This is straight out of their playbook. The image of Ukraine as a chaotic, failing state is part of the Kremlin's playbook. I mean, I've always been told that the Russian uh, military playbook is one of different stages. We have seen Putin resort back to his playbook. George, I've seen this playbook firsthand. It's startling and baffling to work out what the Kremlin's playbook may actually be here, Jim. The playbook is very similar to what has happened in Syria. And, uh, Russia backed up separatists inspired by an ordinary Russian playbooks. Is this all part of the Russian playbook? Brutal attack on Ukraine. We know this because it's a well-worn playbook. That's a classic page out of the Russian playbook. But I think that now that we understand Russia's cyber warfare playbook. This is the playbook that the United States has given intelligence about. The Russian playbook is designed around disinformation. Lies have always been a part of Putin's playbook in Ukraine. The kind of playbook would be presumed for Russia to then install its own uh, kind of pocket leadership. What has Putin's playbook been in the past when he's threatened other nations with military actions? It tells us that the playbook that we laid out, I laid out at the UN Security Council. Warning them that President Putin may next resort to cyber attacks. A page from his playbook. As shocking as the Russian invasion of Ukraine is, this is a playbook we've seen Moscow use to great success. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my new video. Does anybody know what the Russian playbook is? Or has anyone seen the Russian playbook? Does anyone know anything about the Russian playbook? Is there a USA playbook? Is there a British playbook? Oh, come on. Why do people use this playbook so often? Have no idea whatsoever. And then you've got Fox News and the Western papers or still saying that the Russia is still suffering heavy losses. Russia remains on their back foot. They are losing in eastern Ukraine. I mean, come on. Do you not see what's happening in Mariupol when you see thousands of Ukrainian soldiers just surrender? I mean, what planet are these guys on? They're still going through the same hymn sheet. Or shall I say, they're going on the same USA Western playbook. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway guys, my name's AJ and I'm here to take you through a number of um, stories today. Um, if you can like, share, subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And I would, I'd really appreciate even more if you would uh, join my Patreon or you can buy me a coffee as well. So without further ado, let's carry on with the show. So I'm going to start the video with good old Great Britain, good old Boris and uh, good old Nancy Pelosi. So row erupts as US accused of trying to bully UK over Northern Ireland. And you can see here, Brexit minister says UK's focus is peace in Northern Ireland as US warns trade deal at risk over protocol change. Speaker Nancy Pelosi has said making changes to Northern Ireland's post-Brexit trade agreements could damage the peace agreement, the governments of political parties. It is another blow for negotiations with the US regarding the trade deal. So I just want to say a couple of things. Ha ha, ha ha ha, you deserve this, Great Britain. So Great Britain has been a very staunch su supporter of US and its policies. It has blindly followed US, whatever US wanted to do, and it's been a very, very obedient puppet to the US. It has blindly followed the US at the detriment of its own economy, of its own people, for example, um, 
America's war on on China's trade, for example, Britain suddenly decided to do the same thing and started having its own trade uh, war with, with China. Um, USA decided to boycott China in the Olympic Games. Guess what? U UK did the same thing. USA didn't want Huawei to be uh, a top technology company. And guess what? U UK decided to ban Huawei. And then you got all of this stuff with Russia as well. Whatever US wanted to do, um, Britain has done very, very uh, as an obedient slave. Uh, we're also talking about people like um, Assange being extradited to, to the US. Every single request that the US wanted, U UK has done it with pretty much no fight whatsoever. And they were pretty much, yes sir, yes sir, whatever you say sir, you know, we will do anything for you sir. And Britain has supported US in every single um, uh, thing it did, not just now, but in the past as well. You're talking about the Iraq war. You know, Britain has literally never said no to the US. Never. As far, you know, as long as I can remember, never said no. And the only time Britain needed uh, USA support, the only time... And guess what? <laughs> USA says, you go ahead with this and we're not going to have any trade deals with you. <laughs> and I must, just, I must say, you know, Britain deserves it. You know, nobody respects a puppet. Nobody respects a poodle. If you're going to go around, you know, walking around, kissing people's asses, having a brown nose... Nobody respects you, not even the person you are brown nosing, they're, they're not even going to respect you. You know, they have taken UK for granted uh, over the years and UK have been very, very naive and very stupid in following US's uh, policies blindly as well. And I must say, they absolutely deserve it. Boris deserves it. The British Parliament, they all deserve it. And they're just sitting around in shock at the moment, not knowing what to do. They're like, oh my God, the USA is not supporting us. And, you know, they're, they're threatening us. They're bullying us. You know, <laughs> oh, it's just funny. As uh, a wise person um, called Alex would say, this is clown world. This is exactly clown world. <laughs> I just can't believe it. This is just so ridiculous. So ridiculous, guys. Anyway, let's move on. There's a issue with Britain. And this is another way that Britain is trying to make money. Um, there's something called the Greater London ULES. And what that means, it's an ultra-low emission zone uh, in, in uh, London at the moment. And basically means if you've got an old car... Uh, basically, you have to sell it and you need to buy a, a brand new car. Um, and basically, this is to cut emissions in, in London. The problem is, everybody that has an old car, they're poor. They can't afford to sell their old, old car and buy a new one or buy a newer one. They just can't afford it. The people that drive old cars, they're poor. If they could afford a newer car, they would have bought it by now. So basically, they are just targeting more and more poor people. Do you think they are targeting the rich people with this rule? No, rich people are not going to be affected because the rich people will have newer cars. They'll have brand new cars or cars that are a few years old. You know, they can afford it. It's the poor people that are going to be suffering. And again, this is another policy which will target the poor. And already people are suffering with a high cost of living, high cost of... Um, taxes, high oil and gas, high inflation, high cost of mortgage, high gas bills. You know, how can these poor people now, you're asking them to sell their old car and buy a newer car or a brand new car. It's impossible. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. What kind of people are running our government? I mean, seriously, I mean, look at this article. I mean, can you believe this shit? What kind of crap is going on here? I mean, these people should be running our country. You got, you got MPs accused of. You got MPs watching porn when they should be at work. You know, in in Parliament, in front of everyone, looking at porn. You got cocaine being found in the houses of Parliament. You got that idiot Boris running around like a headless chicken. 
that guy Rishi is basically enjoying um, his private pool in his mansion, not having a care in the world about how p British people are suffering. You got Pretty Patel sending people to Rwanda, except Ukrainians. I mean, what the hell is going on with this country? Seriously, this is an absolute joke. This is like watching Benny Hill. This is a parody. I just can't believe it. I just can't believe how crap the UK Parliament has become. And I just don't see anybody out in the streets protesting this. I don't see enough people on YouTube talking about it. What the hell is going on here? The British people have been brainwashed. Brainwashed to the max. Anyway, let's carry on. Croatia is the latest NATO country to reportedly block Finland and, and Sweden membership. So as you know, Turkey has um, been very, very vocal in um, blocking Finland's and Sweden's NATO membership. And rightly so. I mean, you know, Turkey is being very, very clever. It's been very shrewd. And Erdogan has already said what he wants um, from Sweden, what he wants from Finland. Uh, they want them to kick out these PKK um, terrorists um, that Turkey calls them, uh, get rid of them, extradite them. Uh, they also want uh, a lot of money as well. And because you can see Turkey's inflation, you know, is having serious serious issues and why shouldn't he obviously you know he should be you know shrewd and clever enough to to want this and i'm sure he's going to be wanting a lot of money he's going to be wanting a lot of help with the inflation in turkey and you know turkey is turkey is suffering at the moment especially with high inflation so he's going to want a lot of concessions out of the west and the west is going to give it because if you think about it if Sweden and Finland cannot get into NATO because of Turkey. It would be it would be not just embarrassing for Sweden and uh, Finland. It's going to be embarrassing for the West. It's going to be embarrassing for NATO. It's going to be embarrassed for the US. A little country called Turkey, who's who's having a serious issues in in its economy, can block something like that. Obviously, Turkey is not a small country, but to the West, Turkey is very small and insignificant. So now to, um, Croatia has finally um, coming out and saying um, we're go we're also going to block um, block this unless you give us concessions as well, and I can see more countries coming out asking for this as well because this is a time if you are clever, and none of these European ministers are very clever. I mean, you got Ursula and Michelle. Michelle is a girl's name, by the way. I don't know why it's called Michelle. I know it's um, you sp spell it as Michael, but you know they call it Michelle. But you have all of these EU leaders who are basically blindly following the US, blindly following NATO, blindly following Ursula, with no brain whatsoever. You know, they have no reverse gear, as um, some clever guys on YouTube would say. They have no reverse gear, and, and it's absolutely hideous how these people run their own countries and at least some of these uh, people in some EU countries are starting to stand up and saying oh hang on a second we can ask for concessions and ask for anything we want and Turkey can ask for anything it wants Turkey can ask for 100 billion or you know Finland Sweden will have to give it because there's no turning back for them you know they've basically burned their bridges with Russia and there is no turning back for Sweden or Finland. And they have to join NATO at all costs. And I can see Finland and Sweden giving Turkey whatever Turkey wants. If, if Turkey wants 100 billion, they will give it. If Turkey wants 200 billion, they will give it. If Turkey wants to extradite these PKK members, they will, they will gladly give it. Democracy goes out the window when it comes to th stuff like this. You know, democracy will totally go out the window. And I can see Sweden and Finland going, oh, okay, you guys, PKK guys, go on, off to Turkey. We don't give a shit about you anymore. And PKK guys, what about democracy? And you said you will stand by us. And you said, what? Well, you know, you said you will give us safe haven. Screw that. You know, get on your bike to Turkey. We want to join um, NATO. You know, 
democracy goes out the window when it comes to stuff like this and it must be really really embarrassing if you're Swedish or if you're Finnish especially watching these inept leaders blindly following the West and going into NATO without even going through a referendum I mean it must be so embarrassing if you're if you're Finnish but don't worry I live in UK and I have an even more embarrassing government so don't worry about me insulting your government anyway next one G7 countries to provide 19.8 billion in economic aid to Ukraine so this is almost half of what US is providing to to Ukraine so altogether I mean US is um, altogether has given 53 billion I believe or something like that 40 billion um, they have um, asked for recently which has passed and plus the rest um, they have been giving over the past few months and the G7 countries as well and I'm sure that China is looking at this thinking ha 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 we're so we're so glad we're not part of the G7 I mean you have this bunch of poor countries who can't even run their own economies um, gonna you know bring out 19.8 billion from what from their asses to pay the Ukrainians when they can't even run their own economy they can't even raise this in their own country I mean this is absolutely ridiculous people in Europe are suffering you know with the high inflation the, the high cost of living but they have 19.8 billion to give to Ukraine I mean this is beyond a joke this is absolutely a joke So I talked about this before and um, I said that, um, that the Azov militants had surrendered but the funny thing was I didn't really go into much detail uh, about it but in the BBC and a lot of Western papers they were saying that hundreds of besieged Ukrainian soldiers have been evacuated so they were talking about soldiers being evacuated you know over the past few weeks saying they're going to be evacuated to a third country and they're going to be liberated these guys are heroes etc these guys are no heroes i mean they just been stuck in a hole for the past few months how would you call that a hero you know if you're fighting in a war right and your soldiers are hiding in a hole while you're doing all of the fighting how you, how would you call that a he being a hero you're just hiding inside a hole not doing anything I mean the fact that these guys have surrendered and not evacuated I mean you can see the words they've used evacuated when clearly these guys are surrendering I mean they're making it sound like uh, Ukraine is winning and these guys are heroes they've been evacuated to another country they're gonna live like kings you know it's nothing like that they're surrendering and they're, they're going to be in prison for a long time. Do you really think Russia's going to, you know, let out any Azov militants out in the streets? No way! So Russia halts uh, gas supplies to Finland. And this might be a coincidence or it might not. But Finland have said that they're not going to pay uh, gas in rubles. So Russia has cut them off. This is not related to NATO, them joining NATO, wanting to join NATO um, because they along with um, Bulgaria and Poland refused to pay gas in rubles so this is why they've been cut off. I just do not understand why Finland is cause, causing its own suicide by going along with the West and taking sides. You know they have a huge border with Russia you know they could easily stay neutral and get the best of both worlds they could have got um, benefits from the West they could have got benefits from Russia all they had to do is stay neutral I just don't understand how some of these leaders think in today's world they have literally no brain no brain whatsoever anyway you know Finland's really gonna suffer for this um, if Russia halts gas supplies to Finland Finland will have to get more from Norway and Norway will have less to give to the rest of Europe as well so this is gonna cause uh, huge economic issues to Finland in the future um, also to Sweden as well 
and mainly the rest of Europe, because these European leaders, we're talking about Van der Leyen as well, and other people, Michel, they're completely obsessed with Russia, completely obsessed. They're not even thinking about their own people, their own economy. All they want to do is hurt Russia, and all they want to do is hurt Russia via Ukraine. You just have to go to the Twitter page of Ursula. You can see she has Ukrainian flags everywhere. You know, you can tell this woman is completely obsessed with Ukraine, completely obsessed with Russia. And this, this decision she makes is not going to be for the good of Europe. It's not going to be for the good of the people. It's going to be for the good of Ukraine. And that's what she's doing. And that's what most of the EU members are, are doing also. They're just pandering for, to Ukrainian people. And it's really sad to see, you know, the first rule as a leader, you need to look after your own people, your own country first, put your own interests first. But no, she's doing it to put Ukrainians' interests first. And I can see German industry going down, um, German businesses will go down because of the high cost of gas, high cost of oil. You know, they're not going to be competitive anymore. And this is going to cause huge issues, not just to Germany, but to the rest of Europe, Finland and Sweden as well. You know, very, very good industries basically pay for a lot of public services like healthcare, education. You know, that money is going to be going down as well if, if industries go down. And if German people have to pay more for services, for inflation, for goods, you know, there, there's going to come a time when they can't afford to pay for bills or gas bills. I mean, UK is coming to this point right now. I mean, people right now are barely can survive, you know, living with, with the high energy costs, high cost of living. And in October, when the gas bills go up by another 54%, that's when UK people are really, really going to suffer. Because October is going to be, you know, we're going to be coming up to winter. Things are starting to going to be starting to get cold. And... UK along with the rest of Europe will really really suffer then and I can see you know people who can't afford you know these are working class people middle class people who have got real jobs they won't be able to pay off their mortgages they won't be able to pay off their rent to buy have enough money for food because their money is going to be worthless because of the inflation it's going to be worthless whatever money they make out of their jobs is just not going to be enough to pay for the bills, to pay for mortgages, to pay for gas, or pay for food. It's just not going to be enough. And with the wheat shortages and food shortages, if this carries on and there's not enough food in Europe, you will see people rioting in the streets. You know, Europe will suffer fires and riots. You know, for, for weeks and weeks, you will see something very similar to the Arab Spring. Very similar. And the Europe has pretty much had it easy over the years. You know, they've they've basically there was no issues with Europe. Um, they were making a lot of money. You know, it's been relatively Europe has been relatively at peace all these years. So why destroy that? Why, you know, start making enemies out of Russia? Why push? Why push Ukraine to join NATO? You know, this all of this could have been avoided. All of it could have been avoided. You know, if all they had to do was say, all right, Ukraine, uh, you can never join NATO. We don't want to upset Russia. They have their own security concerns. So, you know, let's kind of alleviate that and just talk peacefully. And, and, and that's that's all they had to do. All of this could have been avoided. And I'll tell you right now, those people who actually have been clamoring for Russian sanctions, those people who have been clamoring for aid to Ukraine, who's been talking about Ukraine winning, Russia losing. When the shit hits the fan, when there's real riots on the streets, their heads are going to be first on the chopping block. You know, people will want blood. They will want their heads to be on the chopping block first because they're the ones that put European citizens in, the, in this tight spot, in this difficult spot. Their sanctions... Not Russia going into Ukraine, it's the sanctions that cause this. And guess what? Russia is already talking about having wheat for rubles as well. And when they start charging wheat for rubles, you will see the ruble getting even stronger and stronger. 
And there's still YouTube channels out there. I mean, sorry to say, but, you know, I've seen a lot of YouTube channels. There's one guy called Joe Bloggs who's um, talking about Russia, you know, m manipulating the ruble and things like that. And I'm thinking, seriously, man, you know, you've got 50k subscribers. Just, you know, just have a bit of common sense. You know, if you're selling gas in rubles, obviously your currency is going to get stronger. It's not going to get weaker, is it? It's just basic common sense. Even two-year-old can work that out. And there's still people talking about, uh, you know, how Russia's manually um, uh, increasing the ruble. No. It can't be done. If it can be done, then why doesn't Turkey do it? Why, why doesn't all these other countries having issues with their currency do it? It's not that easy to do. It's basic economics. If you can easily do that to your currency, then every country would do that. I mean, seriously, sort it out, guys. Just sort it out. Anyway, uh, China eyes uh, cheap Russian energy. So all of this oil that the um, Europeans are talking about sanctioning and, you know, blocking from Russia. Well, guess what? Russia doesn't need you. It's going to go all the way to China. And China will happily buy it. Then you've got India will happily buy it. I mean, you just have to look at the population of China and population of India. 1.4 billion in China, 1.4 billion or 1.3 billion in India. You know, they have enough market there to sell their oil and gas. You know, and look at the population compared to Europe. It's nothing. You know, every the world is moving east, guys. You have countries like Indonesia, Malaysia... Um, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, these economies are going to be rising over the next few years. You know, this is where the, the, the biggest rises in economy are at the moment. The GDP growth in those countries are much higher than what's there in Europe. So that's the growth market at the moment. And when you have growth in those countries, they will need oil, they will need gas. Because when your country is growing, your industry grows... And you will need more energy, you will need more oil, you will need more gas. You know, it's basic economics. You know, so Russia will be happily to sell energy to the to the East. They don't need Europe anymore. It's, ridic it's ridiculous how these Europeans think. They just have no brains whatsoever. No brains. China boosts energy imports from Russia. Again, China, you can see... Purchases of oil, gas and coal soared 75% in April. So that's a lot and that's just going to keep going up. You know, China is a, a, a winner in this. Well, while Europeans and U Americans are talking about sanctioning Russia, China is quietly buying Russian oil and gas and, you know, and, and coal. And Russia's like, yeah, sure, here it is. You, you know what, you guys are our friends, so we'll give it to you as a discount. So China's laughing. China's not going to be affected. It's the Europeans that are going to be affected. US stocks suffer long, longest losing streak since uh, the Great Depression. And you can see a lot of um, stocks are going down now. Uh, the stock market is not doing very well due to the high energy costs. And things are going to get even worse, guys. Um, as you know, the U.S. has increased um, the interest rate. So, so a lot of these businesses who have been running their businesses on debt and a lot of U.S. businesses have been doing that. And this is U.S. way of life. They love debt. They love buying debt. So U.S. has been having it easy over the years with very, very low interest rates. And suddenly the Fed has just increased the interest rates. And guess what? Your costs every month has just suddenly got higher because all of these loans that you've been taking with very, very small interests, suddenly you have to pay thousands or millions even, depending on the loan amount. And suddenly you think, oh crap, what do we do now? And all these US companies are now starting, the stocks are starting to go down uh, because the money they're making is not enough because of all the um, inflation costs, all the high costs of raw materials high cost of gas and oil to transport goods you know and also they just can't afford it and now they have to pay more for their debts uh, pay more interest 
and US is going to suffer very, very bad over the next few months. And this is going to happen in Europe as well. Don't forget, this is Europe and, and the US. And I can see the stocks going further and further down. And, and not a lot of people actually reporting this, but the housing market is also going to be uh, going down because people are going to have less money to buy properties. A lot of people will default on their properties because they can't afford it, because they can't afford the mortgages, they can't afford the, uh, to pay rent or, or, or the mortgage. So a lot of people over the next few months will be losing a lot of their properties and you will see a huge, huge um, property crash as well as a stock market crash as well if this continues in over the next few months and i would say probably early as august or september us will go into recession um, they are halfway through recession at the moment as you know the last quarter they had a negative gdp growth so official definition of recession is if you have two gdp growth in a row where it's negative then you are officially at recession so they only need to be negative in the next uh, quarter and and us will declare recession and it's going to be very closely followed by uk as well uk has had 0.1 percent growth or something ridiculous uh, in the last quarter so again uk is also heading uh, along recession as long as, as well as europe so finally i just want to talk about biden um so with all the stuff that's going on around the world with inflation, with Russia, with Ukraine, guess what Biden's doing? He's gone all the way to Asia to form a gang to uh, fight China with. So with all of these issues at home, with all of the inflation issues, do you, don't you think you need to just sit at home and work out, you know, what's more important and work out uh, what to do with your own economy? Sort that out first before venturing out. And he hasn't even sorted out the problems with Ukraine. And he just, you know, recently um, signed a 40 billion aid deal to Ukraine. I think that's going to be enough. That's not going to be enough. You know, this guy stood in front of the American public and said the ruble was going to collapse. Ruble has turned into rubble. The Russian economy is going to collapse. And guess what? The ruble hasn't collapsed. It's gone stronger. The Russian economy hasn't collapsed. It's gone stronger. And this is the same guy that stood in front of the American people and said, Taliban's will never take over Afghanistan over my dead body. You know, it's not inevitable. Guess what? Two weeks later, they took over all of Afghanistan. So why would anyone believe a word that comes out of this guy's mouth? I just can't believe... You know, with all of the problems he's got at home, with all of the issues, with all the issues still in Russia and Ukraine, that he's venturing out into Asia to form another gang to fight with China. You know, don't you have enough plates you're, you're juggling? And now he wants to go all the way to, to Asia to piss off China. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I, I'm just lost beyond words. I am absolutely gobsmacked. Anyway, guys, that's all I have time for today. Let me know what you guys think. I'm sure you don't want to hear me rant all day, but, you know, I want to try and limit this video to 30 minutes. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Um, don't forget to comment. I love reading your comments. If you guys want to um, join my Patreon, I'll be really, really appreciated. Uh, really helps me uh, support the channel or you can buy me a coffee as well that also helps me as well support the channel and, and allows me to do what i'm doing anyway take care for now and have a nice weekend guys and i'll see you in the next video